now we need to look at what is responsible for dark matter. We look at the galaxy such as the Andromeda galaxy. We notice that the stars near the center are spinning very quickly because of the uh, large uh, um, a, a gravitational force and the small distance and that gives this characteristic straight line graph here but as you move away from the central halo of stars the force should drop off very considerably considering there's not very much matter there however as you move away from this halo of stars this concentration of stars here the velocities you would expect would, would drop off very quickly because there's not much matter here which is attracting it. In fact, you would expect it to drop off similar to this. However, it actually drops off like that. This means that the velocity is much higher, which means there must be a greater force causing this centripetal force. And that means there must be actually more mass here. So there's a mass that we can't see. And we use the, um, we call it dark mass or dark matter and we use these velocity curves to be able to see this. In fact, if we look at this galaxy in another part of the electromagnetic spectrum in the infrared, it actually looks like this. So this actually tells us there's some of this star system, this galaxy, that we're not able to see with the visual spectrum. So what is responsible for this mass? You expected to be able to refer to this rotation curve as evidence for dark matter. I must be aware of types of candidates for the dark matter. So, how do we know there's dark matter? Well, this graph levels off here. This means there's a large velocity, which means a high centripetal force, which means a large mass. So, something is contributing for this mass. So, what are the types of candidates that we can have for this matter? We have two acronyms that you need to know. One is called MATRO. This stands for Massive Astrophysical Compact Halo Object. An example would be very large objects, black holes, planets, neutron stars, red dwarfs, things that are not emitting radiation. And we do know that they exist. There's this effect here, which is called gravitational lensing. There's a large dark matter here that we're not able to see. When we look at the, the light from this uh, distant galaxy, it spreads out this way and gets curved around this large dark object. So we actually see two images of the same galaxy. And so therefore we know there's basically something effectively lensing the light. This is called gravitational lensing. So we have Matro. And the opposite of Matro is Wimp. Now this is a Wimp. Oops. No, this is a Wimpy Kid. Sorry. A WIMP is a weakly interacting massive particle. For example, electrons, neutrinos, tau particles, and muons, and so on. It is ironic that what is probably the largest contributor to this dark matter is probably the very smallest particles that exist. Electrons, neutrinos, and so on. Um, they don't emit radiation. We can't actually see them but they could actually be contributing to the, the mass more than anything else. So, machos and wimps.